<laughs> okay, hello everybody. How's it going? It is a beautiful day. We're in Mountain Home, Tennessee, downtown, crystal clear skies. And we're going to kick off the River Life Community Tank live. We got Gina French on the board. And she is jumping in there with that coffee delivering pair. Just what I needed. Thank you so much for that sticker, Gina French. I appreciate that. Got some great folks in the chat. You guys, Joseph of JH Aquatics showing up early, bringing an apple to class. So I moved him to the head of the class. Mikey's fish is here. Lumpy dog, good to see you. Oh, yeah, we're getting it done during quarantine in our fish rooms, aren't we? The fish room fever's here. Let me say this. Memberships are live on the River Life YouTube channel. And member number one is James of Fish Room Fever. Thank you so much, James. I appreciate all you do. And I certainly appreciate you being the first member of the River Life YouTube channel. You can join. little join button down there below the, the video. Click in, see the level, something you want to do to support the channel. Glad to have you aboard. Not required, not necessary. Nothing's going to change. Um, if, you, if you don't become a member, there's just some perks, and I'll be adding some perks for members, members only. Uh, just before I went live today, I saw a members only video posted by KG Tropicals and certainly agree that um, doing members only uh videos is is a good value exchange so um I, I just looked down at my phone i got a text here um this is i mean this is the way the universe works right i got a text from greg jones who says sorry i've been mia for so long crazy busy with life and work so um he's ready to get his bonsai uh woke up for spring get some bonsai going on and i'm uh really looking forward to talking to him about my aquarium box after all the changes they went through last year at the end of last year um and i crazy i had just looked on the my aquarium box website to see if they had any change of schedule or anything like that during the the quarantine so it's pretty cool i was thinking of greg he was thinking of me he reached out while we're all together it's almost like he's with us right because now we've talked about him sleeper aquatics jumping in as a member welcome to sustainer level sleeper aquatics we're glad to have you welcome aboard that is fantastic i take my off chat for one minute we got a new member so yeah we got memberships going on we got the uh, greg jones and my aquarium box texting in we got all of you beautiful people in the chat anthony's fishy friends not the least of which sandy dotty tiffany white's here Good to have you. I hope a lot of you guys can continue to hang in here with me on these morning live streams, Monday and Friday at uh, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time now, uh, after the world gets back to normal. And I know some of you won't be able to, but it's kind of a lunchtime thing. You can you can check in at lunch if you have to go back to the office. Uh, and if you're, if you're able to continue on with these morning uh live streams i think i'm going to excuse me i think that's exactly what i'm going to do now i got bob kaler over here doing uh, james and bob are wonderful moderators kaler's aquatics always wearing the dapper hat i love that hat bob looks good on you um kaler's aquatics doing a fantastic collab himself with dan's fish room doing a giveaway uh just marking another milestone in his series of successes on his YouTube channel, Kaler's Aquatics. I uh, love the hashtag was Go Bob Go. And I certainly echo that. Go Bob Go. You keep on going. Lefty's become a member. Thank you so much. Lefty 3213A. Welcome to the sustainer level. That means so much. I appreciate you for wanting to sustain the River Life YouTube channel. We have a great community here. And we're going to keep doing great things and I'm going to do some extra great things for members. That's all. Um, you know, um, life isn't free. Sometimes it's not even cheap. So your membership um, support helps. It helps keep the doors open, the lights on, the gear and working order, the travel. Uh, it, it all helps. So thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Uh, Hippie Bob coming soon. Looking forward to it. I'm on board with Hippie Bob. That's wonderful psychedelic hippocampus 
is in the house. I'm just excited about saying that name on the air. That's really cool. Thank you for being here. Got a thumbnail out there for this live stream. Tub for fish. Uh, some of you are down with that idea. You know what I'm talking about. We're talking about summer tubbing, seasonal outdoor fish keeping in tubs. Uh, this It's the theme this week. We talked about it Monday. Wednesday, we released a video. If you haven't seen that video yet, um, check it out. Uh, it's a great video. It's doing pretty well. Um, it's in the high average of performance of the videos. What do we got? We got over 200 Gosh, approaching 250 videos published now, maybe more. And this one is performing at the high end of average. Thank you very much if you've already seen it. If you've not, check it out. Um, fish tub. And you'll see my new 300-gallon galvanized tub that Riverwife and I set up to get our tubbing season started off right. Uh, we're already dis designing and discussing other tubs out there on our patio we, we talked about that on the live stream on Monday and in the video. So the video's got about 235 views, 55 likes, so pretty spectacular engagement there. Thank you so much. I do appreciate the likes. I mean, it is currency. When a creator sees the likes, he knows he's doing something right, is doing something right, or she, and is motivated to continue. Uh, today, we got 25 in here watching right now. We got 17 likes. It is 11.35. We're five minutes in. Beautiful downtown Mountain Home, Tennessee. You guys are here. I'm glad to be with you. We're talking about fish in tubs. Um, what I want to get from the community today are some of your ideas, experiences, suggestions for fish stock. Um, here locally, I'm in the foothills of the Great Smoky Mountains. And our local nurseries are not going to be getting an inventory of aquatic plants, pond plants, marginal plants until the end of May. So I'm actually shopping on eBay and Aquabid and uh, Get Gills for some aquatic plants, especially the floaters for my uh, for the the tubs plural. And I want to know what your ideas for, for other stock is. Uh, I know we talked about some on Monday during the live stream that I got pretty excited about. And um, I wondered if you had any other ideas. Now that we've had a week to think about it. Morgan Wood, thank you for lurking and working. Um, appreciate you being here. Oh, Sandy, I'm sorry for your loss. Uh, I, I surely am. Thank you for hanging out with us. Hopefully you'll find some comfort uh, in the community here. I see our, our moderator, Kaylor's Aquatics, is already reaching out to you with some encouragement there. Thank you for doing that, Bob. So, yeah, what are your, what are your thoughts on stocking an outdoor tub? And this is seasonal, so um, it doesn't have to be a, a true cold-weather fish. It can be seasonal and come in when the temperatures drop. Although we did also discuss some species that would be okay to overwinter in a, in a tub. Um, I've kept koi outdoors all year long. Uh, caveat, because my uh, tank was one of these tubs, it was above ground and I had raised it. Uh, it didn't get the thermal insulation from being on the ground, so I did wrap it with some thermal insulating material. And during the coldest nights when it was, I don't know, low teens to below zero, I did uh, introduce inside the insulation wrap a ceramic disc heater and let it run all night on low. So just to make sure the thing never froze solid, you know, and then I had fish suspended in and ice cubes. I didn't want that. So I ran a heater on it when, when it was the coldest nights and that it seemed to work. It did not melt the ice cap on top of the, the pond, it, the tank. It was an inch, inch and a half thick. And I would, I'd break it up periodically just to make sure there was some oxygen exchange at the surface. Uh, but the koi were fine. They overwintered just fine. I mean, maybe it's two winters. 
Um, it was two winters. One was mild, and then the next had the sub-zero temps. So, um, and then in the larger in yard, you know, in ground ponds, that people don't take those koi out of there. They're, that's their home. That's where they live. So, uh, looking up at the chat, Big City Betta's in the house. Hey, how's it going, Amber? Welcome aboard. Um, yes, I know you're excited for summer tubbing. So, tell us, Amber, what are, what are you going to put out in tubs? I'm trying to get some ideas. Uh, Sandy Dottie asking if there's any concern about galvanized steel, and the answer is yes, of course there is. But uh, my research says it's okay, temporarily anyway. No, no adverse effect. Uh, the zinc that's used as a coating, um, it doesn't alter the water parameters outside of a good range for the fish. So at least temporarily, there is concern, but I'm okay with it temporarily. So if I find out differently by experience, I will definitely pass that along. Okay. We're looking at fish kebabs. Come on, Mr. Kaler. Um, that's funny. I'm looking through the chat. I'm looking for species of fish to put in that tub. What are you guys doing? What have you done? Um, yeah, absolutely, Lumpy Dog. You can put a tub out not in direct sunlight. One of the most successful ones I had was on a covered porch. It never had direct sunlight. And the surface plants did very well and i bred uh forget which one but i bred gudeids in it 35 gallon preform home depot off the shelf on the porch no direct sunlight i did have a small water feature a little uh it was like a fountain but i had it set at this like it was more of a bubbler no no decorative water sprayed out of the top it just agitated the surface of the top and uh uh, duckweed went crazy in there. I would harvest duckweed from that tub and put it in the koi tub, and they would have a nice snack. Uh, water lettuce did just fine. The water lettuce also, with the long roots, provided excellent cover for the fry, the gudeid fry. So I took more fish out of there than I put in, I'll tell you that. Got another $2 super chat on the board, this time from Sleeper Aquatics, who also just came a member today. Thank you so much, Sleeper Aquatics. Um, you can see the post beneath the super chat and notice the member icon for Sleeper Aquatics asking, anyone ever do a pistos in the tub? I'm interested in that too. Has anybody ever done a pistos in a tub? Um... I haven't thought to because whenever I think of tubbing and we've talked about this in the community tank live before I'm interested in a nice dorsal view, you know, a, a fish that has a flare, some color, um, some sort of a, a shape or something that's cool when viewed from the top. So I haven't actually thought about a pistos, but I have noticed if you if you're in a breeding program most of the fish if not all of them i'd have a hard time disproving this because mostly i've used live bears colorful live bears uh they breed better outdoor in a tub and i don't know if that's the natural sunlight or the vegetation grows differently faster larger i don't know but i've had much better uh spawning and raising fry success outdoors than I have indoors. So um, I think that my belief is in that outdoor tub, it becomes more of a natural environment, more of a natural life cycle. Uh, we don't control everything that goes in there as far as invertebrates. So there could be lots of natural snacks that the fish are getting that they don't get in the tank. Definitely there's some sort of a a UV differentiation from natural light and our artificial aquarium lights. So I don't know that I know of anybody that's done a pistos. I'll do a Google search when we finish here and check up on that because it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, shapely fish. Yeah, Bob, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You got to get the shapely fish in the pond. 
I think so. Uh, Kristen uh, Widener asked, do Hillstream loaches do good outside? They have a good dorsal view. Well, it's an excellent point, and I'm going to say yes. Uh, I believe them also to be a bit cold tolerant. You wouldn't overwinter them, but I don't think you have to have a heater in your tank to keep those. So I would imagine they would be just fine in a tub. And they might help out with some algae as well. That's a good idea. Let me make a note here because I, if if I'm not mistaken, I may have just decided I'm going to put some of those in my tub. Hillstream loaches. History being made right here in the community tank. All right, follow up with me on that. See if see if I've decided to do that. Hey, Science Gal Aquatics, welcome aboard. We're talking about putting fish in the tub outside seasonally. It's that time of year almost. I'm itching to get started. What kind of fish would you put in a tub? What have you kept? What would you like to keep? Why? High flow. Big City Bad as Amber said, yeah, they're a river fish. They like some high flow. So, um... You might have to get a, a, a power head or something in there to get some flow to keep those guys happy. Um, and, I, you know, I mentioned that with the Gudeids. I think all fish like a little bit of flow. Uh, even if, if you have a, a school of fish and they make the flow by swimming around, I don't think they like that stagnant water. Um, I have used in shallow the 50-gallon, the Rubbermaid 50-gallon oval tub, which I love. It's very shallow. I've used a uh, very small sponge filter, more so, again, for the air bubbles agitating the surface of the water than for the filtration. Although, you know, the filtration is fine. I just get most of my filtration done biologically with the plants in the outdoor tubs. But the uh, you can get a few of those um, air um, sponge filters running and, and generate some flow, just orient them all to one side. Uh, that reminds me, in that tank, uh, we had a family of raccoons that enjoyed visiting the pond. It was on the ground, and there was no protection around it. And they would come and just, you know, pilfer through all the plants and I guess try to catch fish or something, look for crawdads in this little artificial pond. But I would go out in the morning, and I would see water hyacinth halfway up the backyard, air tubing all over everything, uh sponge filter over against the house <laughs> those rascals <laughs> so uh that's when i started getting the bird netting and clamps and clamping them to the tank to the tub to keep predators out and then eventually even um putting like tomato stakes around the pond and then putting the netting with um cool things draped on it like cds or pie pans little deterrence for these nocturnal rascals pulling shenanigans in my ponds. Rosy reds do the best year round in a pond, says Science Gal Aquatics. Mollies and guppies did well in the tubs last year, but looking for new ideas myself. JH Aquatics communicating with Amber via this chat. I'm telling you, things happen. Things happen right here in this community. And the microscope should be arriving today. So Amber, you be on the lookout for that. That We need that microscope. Us fish fam enjoy when Joseph of JH Aquatics makes a video and includes the microscope. That's not something we get to see every day, so thank you very much. And um, Joseph, what are you doing with those wild-caught guppies, and do you have any F1s? That's the question. Do you have any F1 wild-caught guppies? Cooley Kev is here saying good morning to everyone. How are you doing? Good to see you here. I have not been paying very close attention to chat per usual, so if I missed anything, I apologize. And if it was a super chat or a member of mods, please let me know. I will make amends. Okay, Anthony's Fish Rooms is saying hello to Recon. Is Recon here? Yes, Recon338. Hello, sir. Welcome aboard. Good to have you here. We're talking about keeping fish in tubs. It's almost that time. It was about 34 degrees here last night. Uh, got a frost warning in effect. Got one more cold day 
in the immediate lineup. And then uh, next week into the middle of the week after, the extended forecast says uh, we're going to have some warmer temps. So I think I'm going to go ahead and order those plants from the interwebs, the floating plants. I uh, found some water lettuce, some water hyacinth, some red root floaters, um, water spangles. So yeah, I'm gonna order. I'm gonna order up some of those and get them floating in the pond. Get ready. Uh, I've got the 300 gallon running the galvanized tub. You can see it in the video that was released on Wednesday. Uh, thank you again for your support on that video. And um, so hopefully there'll be a series of videos on this year's tubs. Like every now and then we'll do an update. Uh, certainly after I stock the plants, after I set up the other tub, I have another tub. It's not set up yet. It's 35 gallon, one of the Home Depot preforms. Um, I think those are, what are they, 30 bucks or something like that? I want to set that guy up. And then we'll do another video once uh, we get some fish stocked or, and or invertebrates, what, whatever we go with there. Lumpy Dog says it's snowing in southeast Michigan right now. Mm. Not missing the snow. Sleeper Aquatics, just out of curiosity, what plants are you guys doing in your tubs? I know I'll be doing red root floaters, water lettuce, and octopus plants as I produce excessive amounts of them. Awesome. Well, that's great you have your own stock there, Sleeper Aquatics. Um, I've seen uh, Dwarf Sage do pretty well. If it's covered, it doesn't necessarily want the full sun. It probably could take it, but what happens is your water gets fouled with so much algae if you're in the full sun. Um, I'm trying to think what else I may have. I mean, you got your water lilies, your dwarf water lilies, and with the pond baskets now, you can protect those from most fish. We got Big City Betta's dropping a $5 bill right in the middle of the chat saying... Contributing to the tub stocking fund. Excited to see what you choose. Well, it just got $5 better, whatever it is, Amber. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. There'll be pictures on the River Life YouTube channel. It's 11.51. 37 of you here watching now. Thank you guys for stopping by. 23 likes. You're a great crowd. Um, I'll tell you what. James of Fish Room Fever found out how great you were last night when he did the time slot takeover for the River Life Community Tank Live following KG Tropicals every Thursday night at 1030 Eastern. And he had a whopping group of people in there showing him all kinds of love, people joining his channel, hitting that membership bell, dropping super chats. And I think he told me today he got like 40 subscribers. And he's no more awesome because he did his show during our time slot. But you guys are more awesome because every time I bring someone else into the time slot to introduce you to, you extend this type of kindness. I'm so proud of you. You are a beautiful group of people. And thank you so much for sharing that attention with my friend James at Fish Room Fever, who said nice things about me and the River Life Channel and you guys, the community tank, all night long. And after the show, he sent me some messages just ex expressing so much appreciation. That continued uh, this morning. So he's definitely appreciative of your positive attitude and kindness that you shared with him. And I'm proud to death of you. Way to go, you guys. And I knew you would. I'm not surprised, but I have a, the warm and fuzzy feels are here because you came through again like I knew you would last night during the time slot takeover. So thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. It's something we can do as a community during these weird times where we talk about social distancing, but actually we're physical distancing and we need some social unity. This is the time we need to come together as a community. So I am live streaming Monday morning and Friday morning. We're getting together twice as often. We've doubled our time together and we're letting other channels come into the time slot on Thursday nights so I can introduce them to you and you can get to know them and because you're so awesome and you trust me not to take advantage of you you know I'm gonna choose somebody that I think you'll enjoy somebody you may or may not have heard of 
but someone whose content that I consume and enjoy. So it's working out that we can use this platform that, that we built, this infrastructure, to benefit so many other people in the community. And then they pay it right back with all the nice things they say about you and I. It's, it, it works out. Everything is just beautiful when we help each other. We got the fish nerd in here. How's it going, Carlos? Um, what's the good news? We're thinking of you, buddy. We're glad you're here today. I know you got life going really fast around you right now. So thanks for dropping in saying hello. Um, what else we got going on? Did I miss any species recommendation in the chat? That's right, Third Watch. That was a wonderful thing. It's a bump for a channel. And it's happened week after week since we've been doing that. We've been doing that time slot takeover and all the channels are, are feeling the bump in their channel. So I think it is a, it's the highest and best use of our resources right now. Very, very special time. We're making history in the world right now. We are. They're going to be talking about this period in history for centuries to come. Just like we still talk about the last pandemic that swept the world. So it's a special time. We're doing special things. We're bending the needle in creative ways, doing things that haven't been done before, inventing new things to do to bring more goodness. So KG Tropicals is very, very helpful in building the River Life YouTube channel. And John said, Rack, you know, you need to think of yourself. You need to get back in that time slot be before people forget that, you know, that's actually your time slot. And I hear that and I understand that, but my heart just tells me to help some other channels out right now. I can do this. I, we're meeting twice a week. Okay. It's a different day. It's a different time, but we're still getting together. I'm getting my fix with the community tank. Thank you very much. And we're sharing these great success stories over and over with other channels. And it's just, for me right now, it seems like the right thing to do. And the right thing is the best thing. So that's, that's why and, and what's happening because of the why. And it's a community effort. It's you guys. I mean, you guys are making all this happen. So thank you again from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you very much. Glancing at the chat, we got a new name here on the board today. Texas Fish. Have you considered sunfish? They would they would do great. I have. I absolutely love those fish. They are the stunning fish. As a matter of fact, I've got some art sketches over here of some of our Tennessee native sunfish. I'll probably get some of those on canvas before long because they're so stunning. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, think of a bluegill with extreme, insane, beautiful colors. Let's see if I can find one quickly here. The problem is I can't keep them in Tennessee. Uh, we're not allowed to keep as pets any native fish. We can only possess native fish with a fishing license within a krill and size limit and or for bait. But we can't keep them in an aquarium. So a lot of us uh, used to belong to a group that went out looking for native fish you know, we'd observe them and turn them loose. We'd collect a few, put them in our aquariums. And, of course, the sunfish were the most popular because they're gorgeous. I mean, they have more colors than the rainbow. <laughs> That's not an exaggeration. Here we go. Here we go. All right. So there's there's my interpretation of a red-breasted sunfish. And I wanted to do some of these, see which one I liked, see which one had balance. Oh, there's a... Oh. That's clown killifish dress that I designed. Okay, so yeah, sunfish, awesome fish, amazing fish. By the way, um, I'm glad I mentioned the art. We're going to do an art chat on Facebook Live immediately following this live stream. I'm going to take a five-minute break at the end of this. Then we're all going to go over to, or you're all invited. I don't know how many will show up. Usually it's an intimate group. Very few of you come over. The Zen Ginger's in the house. Hello. How's it going, Amanda? Good to see you. Down the wormhole is here. Hello, hello, D. Man, you guys are piling in. 39 watching right now. It's 11.59. We're approaching the high noon mark. 28 likes. Thank you guys very, very much. 
We're going to do an art chat and immediately following this. You're all invited. It's usually an intimate group. Not a lot of you come over for that. And it's okay. It's not about fish. It's about art. The, right now at River Life Art Facebook page, most of the art is directly inspired by tropical fish and the fish keeping hobby. That said, sometimes my brush has a mind of its own and it paints things that aren't exactly fish inspired. For instance, yesterday, if you follow me on Instagram, you already know this. I allowed my imagination to break quarantine. My imagination went crazy. It did. Okay, I'm just catching up with the fish nerd who reports no baby yet, waiting on labor to kick in any minute. Any minute. He's with us right here in the community. We're with you, man. I'm glad you're here. We're pulling for you guys. You go, Regina. Um, doctor acted yesterday like we should have a baby today, but nothing yet. All right, hang in there. We're, we're right there with you. You're going to have some fry in the community tank. Here we go. Yep, yesterday, right out there on the easel. And if you're following me on Instagram, River Life TN on Instagram, you may have already seen this. But I let my imagination break quarantine and head on over to the beach. You know, River Wife and I were married in the Keys. It's a beautiful place, much like this. So we may talk about palm trees and clouds and beaches. But, um, you know, hey, what's going on, the loach guy? And hello, Tubbers is right. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't have picked the brush back up at this time of my life if it weren't for tropical fish. But looking around the studio gallery, I got birds. I got salamanders. I got native fish. I got tropical fish. I got a sketch of a butterfly around here someplace. I got lizards. Um, and then I got this. I mean, sometimes you just, you got to let your jazz flow, you know? It's cool, man. It's just cool. It's forward. It's modern. It's contemporary. I know. May not be your cup of tea. That's all right. Hey, it wasn't mine for a long time. We end up talking about that in the art chats. I couldn't believe it. The, the switch. I was out of Army basic training, back in school, a young adult. Had no use for modern art. What in the world is that crazy stuff? And they made me take this course, uh, Art Appreciation. 180. This professor engaged the students, started saying things, and I thought, well, maybe it's okay to learn this. And then he took us on a tour of the Modern Art Museum in Washington, D.C., and I fell in love with it and have been doing art ever since. My first solo art show 20 30 years ago you know the years run together these days but anyway i got back in touch with that professor and told him you know what an influence he'd been in my life and how he really turned me on to art and i was asking him for some suggestions about how to host a, a solo art show and he had since promoted to another college as their president and i'm not surprised he's a great guy uh and you know that's just the greatest compliment that a professor could get and I was happy to give it to him I didn't have any use for modern art you turned me around now I'm a modern artist and uh, I, I, I say that just to let you know this is just a glimpse of how much more wonderful my life got when I learned how to view how to engage how to appreciate contemporary and modern art it was a large part of a beautiful world that I was missing I just had blinders on I wasn't miserable, don't get me wrong. But once I learned how to do this thing, my world got more beautiful. And I had, I mean, I didn't think of it, and you maybe haven't either, but it's really hard to go through a day, a normal day. It could be different under these circumstances of shelter in place quarantine. But on a normal day, it's very difficult to do a day of life and not encounter modern or contemporary art, non-representative art. Okay, this is art. It's a figment of my imagination. I just bring my imagination to the canvas to share with you. It doesn't represent anything. It's non-functional. This is representative art. There are several things in here that you recognize. A sky, the clouds, the palm tree. 
Okay, representative, non-representative. This is a little forward. Uh, it may not be your flavor. You know, I don't like tomatoes. I don't like to eat raw tomatoes by themselves. I love ketchup. I love salsa. I don't like a slice of tomato on a hamburger or a sandwich. I don't like just the tomato. So everyone has different flavors. You know what I'm saying? And it's okay. It's okay. But just like fish keeping, what works in my room may not work in your room and vice versa. So what we do over here at the River Life YouTube channel, and especially here in the community tank, we still got the sticker jam going. If you guys want some River Life stickers, hit me with the self-addressed stamped envelope. There, it, there is in the description a post office box. We like to put options on our buffet for us to make our lives better, more beautiful, happier, easier. And if you are invited to the buffet, feel free to take whatever you want, share it, pass it along, bring some others to share, take what you want. But if you encounter something that maybe isn't your flavor, you don't like it, it's okay. Just don't spit on it. Don't expend any of your resources, time, or energy on being negative. Just walk on by, find something you do like. That's all. That's the safe community space that we build here for each other. And I certainly understand if this non-representative contemporary art is not your flavor. I gotcha. And that for a long time, well into adulthood, it wasn't mine either. Um, yeah, I'm a red wing blackbird fanatic. I put those things, decades I've painted that bird. I love that bird. So I do the birds. Those birds happen to live in a habitat that's marshy, cattails, water, ducks, fish, invertebrate, uh, water dwelling mammals. So that fish, that fish, um, that bird ties together a whole ecosystem for me. Love it. Love the symbolism there. I absolutely love that bird. I love painting it. I love sharing it with any, anyone who wants to have it shared with them. Oddball Aquatics says, hey, Rack, are you still living your best life? As a matter of fact, I am. I'm glad you're here, Haley of Oddball Aquatics. Check out this painting. Here's what my uh, best life looks like in abstract form. Five by seven canvas board acrylic. I mean, I, I, I hope, can you tell, does it jump off the page? I'm living my best life. I am having the time of my life. I'm so happy. I'm energized. I'm sharing and caring. I think all of those emotions are expressed in something as abstract as that. I do. I think so. And I've been rambling on. I'm looking for a guppy. Yeah, here we go. Back to fish. Back to tubs and fish. We didn't go anywhere. Hey, Jessica Taylor, thank you so much. That was very nice. SC Aquatics. Hey, thanks, SC Aquatics. Hey, let's work a deal, Stephen. You guys check out SC Aquatics store. Uh, you feel free to post his link to his store there. I've bought from him. Excellent person. Great customer service. Wonderful product. I endorse SC Aquatics. Check out this guppy painting. This is a wild guppy number five. Every time I walk by my guppy tank, I get different paintings. It's so easy to get inspiration out of that tank. Steven, let's get some uh, art of mine on your website. We'll do some consignment or something. I can make you a wholesale deal. You want to do that, buddy? Hit me up. We're going to do an art chat immediately following this stream. We're going to go to Facebook, uh, River Life Art Facebook page. We're going to talk about some art. Sleeper Aquatics, uh, member number two, says, Gina French, at the end of your season, sell livestock and plants to local hobbyists for the aquariums. Excellent idea. Most aquarists prefer hobby bred fish and plants. I don't know of anyone that um, has developed a reputation of trust that has not been able to sell their stock. Michael's Fish Room, selling it all day long. Uh, go to Get Gills. Dan's Fish Room hosts this uh, basically uh, fish keeping community outlet, like probably where Aquabid started. And now Aquabid's kind of made a shift, you know, toward a lot of trans shipping and so forth. Although there's still some, some local breeders on there. Check out Get Gills. 
Um, yeah, it does sound good, Steve, and I look forward to doing that. The Zen Ginger says, I've got great fish coming from him next week. Sweet. Way to go, the Zen Ginger. Way to be the testimony. Loach guy retracted the message. I'm sure it was a great one. We missed it. Sorry about that. So, yeah, we're going to do that in about 20 minutes. We're going to go over to the Facebook page. If an auction breaks out, you may be able to acquire some of this. It's, I mean, we're playing it by ear. Weird times, okay? Maybe it's not the time. I mean, so first stream ever I've had memberships available. You're welcome to join. Lefty321A joined. And actually, um, you may, who, who was number two? It may have been Lefty. Lefty may have been member number two. Yeah, I may have gotten that wrong a minute ago. Um, and Sleepy Aquatics, Sleeper Aquatics may have been number three. But man, you guys are piling in. Now, hashtag OG squad. If 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 a it may not be the time to spend money on luxury uh, lifestyle pieces. Okay, if if that happens, we're they're not high priced. It's Low cost, no one's going to go broke, no one's going to get rich, it's just going to be more community time, you know, I've got these things piling up, and and we'll move them. What we do, is FYI, we start the bidding at $10 on every piece, that way I can include free shipping in the United States. So, free shipping at $10, if it goes to $15, usually I can throw in a free easel, just a little, nothing fancy, just a little wooden easel to display your art on, okay? It goes for $15, free shipping and a free easel. And um, yeah, so nobody gets hurt. People just get some cool stuff. That's what you want to do, fine. If not, it's it's all good. Uh, that stuff will be available. I haven't put it on Etsy. I do have a Patreon that I may be shifting more toward uh, the memberships on the channels. I've got to work that out because I'm relatively new to both. But on Patreon, I am I do have a level where uh, the Masterpiece level includes a free print every month with your membership on Patreon. Yep, so we're working that out. Uh, the Zen Ginger, I hope you can come over and hang out with us in the, uh, the art chat on the River Life Art Facebook page. We're going to go there immediately after we leave here. I'd love for all of you to be there. Uh, we'll have a good time looking at some art. I've already given you a couple of peeks at this crazy jazz-related stuff I'm doing. FYI, okay, again, non-representative, right? Don't. I'm, the title here is not suggestive. The title here, Endler's Live Bearer, is suggestive. Wild Discus, okay? Cardinal Tetra. Those are suggestive titles. You're on your own here. You know what I titled this one? This one is titled High Tide. It, it just it's crazy like that. Don't try to, it, don't look for the high tide. It's not in there. See what you want to see. The viewer is always right. Okay, title of this one, Tall Buildings. Not what I saw. This is not an abstraction of tall building, not a distortion of tall buildings. This is a snapshot right out of my imagination. Finished it up, signed it, needed the title. Title is Tall Buildings. They're not in there. What do you see? Whatever you want it to be. Unlike Wild Guppy. Totally suggestive. But if you see something else, that is so cool. That is so cool. Do not be limited by my suggestive title. Recon says, River Life, been asking other streamers this question also. Do you prefer sponge filter or filter floss? And your hang on the back filter. Ah, it depends on the job. Um, in the fish room, I always default to the sponge filter because it's air operated on a series of tanks. Whenever I've had a standalone tank, like here in the studio, there's one tank. It's got an HOB. It's a little uh, Oliver Knot scaped tank. It's quieter. Gives me more room in the tank. It's already a nano tank. So I use the hang on back. I, I'm going to have to say, yeah, it depends. It, it depends on the situation. I can go either way or both. So that's my answer. 
Jessica Spade. No, that's lefty three two one three A says Jessica Spade. It takes a bit of work, but try just going to the River Life YouTube channel and clicking on membership on the top. Maybe you can do it that way. Well, that sounds like a good idea to me, Jessica Spade. If that's what you're into, go for it. Is that the sailboat from Mall Rats? Are you talking are you talking about one of my beautiful art pieces? Surely not. Oh yeah. Yeah, so my imagination didn't just break quarantine yesterday. This is this was a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, fish and tubs. I said fish and tubs. That's exactly what we're talking about. Fish and tubs. But then the Zen Ginger says, Rack, do you still have multiple ruby, <laughs> ruby throated hum or I mean green and oles? Uh at least these two. At least these two. Let's see. Vertical and ole. And left and all, a.k.a. ruby-throated hummingbirds. And Riverwife was lurking in here earlier. She's nodding her head yes right now. She'll probably come out of lurk mode and give you a high five or something for saying that, the Zen Gender. But I had already written on them. I mean, you don't want to strike through that, right? And then have to write ruby-throated hummingbird. Do you still have a ruby-throated hummingbird? I mean, green and old, Amanda? <laughs> and there's enough to go around. You can get first pick, though, the Zen Ginger, because um, you know how to do it. You know how to work it. Uh, recon, advantages and disadvantages of a tub versus building a pond, it's immediate. You go to Home Depot, you lay your 30 bucks down, they give you a preformed Standalone tub, you set it up on your patio, put water in it, cycle it, however you do that, boom, you're in business. Um, you want a you want in-ground pond also, you got the option for that? I say do it. If it were me and I had that option, I'd probably set up some tubs. And then while I'm building a pond. And I would stock the tubs thinking about what can I put in the pond? Because if you put guppies in a pond, ah, whoo, I don't think you can get them all out. They're not going to last the winter. You're going to have some, that's going to be bad news for some guppies. So stock your ponds with what you think you might overwinter. Now, I do know a person who accidentally, but successfully, overwintered cherry shrimp in a little pond. He bought one of the little Home Depot ponds, dug out the ground and set it in the ground so it was an in-ground pond. He had a spillover type filter with a lot of bio filter. He had a lot of plants growing that went nuts, by the way. It was great. But it made it difficult to maneuver around all the landscaping and hardscaping to get the uh, to get the inhabitants out of the pond. So then when he opened up the next spring, he found cherry shrimp. <laughs> I, I got as many as I could, and certainly it was more than I put in there, so I didn't mean to leave any in there. But they made it. So yeah, um, they both definitely have advantages. The advantage of a pond is you can go larger, you can go deeper, uh, you can get more gallons, you can have a bigger water system. It can be much more natural. The tub, I think, is great for tropical fish. Seasonal. Take them out for a while, bring them back in. Take them back out for a while. Notice the difference in the fish that you put outdoors. I have really enjoyed in the past and look forward to uh, some more um, doing live bearer breeding projects. I mean, I did that 50 gallon tub. I had mollies and platies and sword tails. And at one time I was just scooping out fry. Uh, get, if it's an orange, I guess it's a platy or a sword tail, <laughs> but I didn't know what it was. It was solid black, maybe a molly, but I had all kind of mixed fry. And I put them in a 40 gallon in the fall and grew them out just to about so you could tell what they were. I had a bunch of everything and I took them down to the local fish store and they were absolutely delighted to, um, to work something out with me as most people are hobby bred fish are in demand and why wouldn't they be? They're not ship stressed. They're already accustomed to the local water. And, um, generally I, I just, I think they're healthier. I mean, you guys probably all use some sort of medication quarantine 
regime. So you get rid of parasites that ship stressed fish are famous for introducing to your system when you have to go to the store and buy them. So I don't know, a lot of benefits to um, propagating. And it's the tub is just an excellent, it's a fun way of husbandry for me. It's, and the plants and then the uh, terrestrial plants on the fringe and the marginal plants on both, you get the whole system going there. You're just running your own little mini ecosystem. And um, if you look at that video, here's something fun for you to do. Go back and watch Wednesday's video, Fish Tub, and look at that setup that I included from Green Oasis Farms. Holy cow, this is tubbing on steroids. Oh, wow. So uh, they had one of those 50 gallon tubs spanning two large 300 gallon tubs filled with aquaponics media and iris growing in them for biological media. So it was a beautiful decorative piece, but totally functional. So all of that um, aquaponic media was doing biological filtration and the roots of those um, uh, iris, which they were going crazy too. We caught them there at the right time. Uh, just feeding on all of that processed fish waste. There's just a flow through system. So it was flowing through, coming up in the, and then rent, final rinse was through these plants and this aquaponic media down into two different tubs. And I think the main thing, I don't know if I showed a very good video of it. It was, uh, it was one of those large, looks like a, a swimming pool filter. So it's got the, the sand and the balls, the tiny balls that, that filter out all the water, high, high capacity. And they had a, a beautiful uh, shade covered area just lined in hundreds of gallons after hundreds of gallons of tubs. Fantastic. And the, being in Florida, they were able, they had tropical fish, they had koi, they had goldfish, they had everything under that shade canopy, which they needed to keep the osprey out. Those guys love to eat a fish every now and then. Yeah, JH Aquatics giving the nod to aquaculture because it's so awesome. Cooley Kev says, I'm thinking of doing a rainwater outdoor aquarium and putting some of my plants and maybe white clouds in it. I'm curious to see how Crips grow in natural light. Cooley Kev, you're my hero. Please do a five gallon aquarium uh, outdoors and let me know how those Crips do. I will definitely add that to the Baquarium database and include it in upcoming videos about the Baquariums. Did you guys see my spring cleaning video with the bucket? I put all my crap into one bucket, most of it. Cleared out a couple shelves so I had room for eight more Baquariums. I've got two breeding projects now in the fish room, just like they're like on standby. And these cold nights, my fish room isn't finished yet. I'll give you an update on that here in the last five minutes. Um, so difficult to regulate the temperature to spawning temps for a couple of these projects. So I'm holding off introducing the fish to the aquariums because they're plastic buckets. I don't feel comfortable um, sharing the idea of using a heater in a plastic bucket. Can it be done? I don't know. Am I going to recommend you do it? No way, Jose. I am not recommending anyone put a heater in a plastic bucket. Can it be done? Uh, I'll let the experts decide. I'm no expert. So I'm waiting for the ambient temp to raise out there a little bit so I can maintain spawning temps without a heater to get going. And I've got two fantastic breeding projects lined up. One uh, involves some really cool apparatus that I've been able to find and organize, you know, it's not really a build, but more of an assembly to make this thing work. Uh, can't wait to share that with you and also increase the number of species that I have bred in a bucket. So, uh, spoiler alert in part is, uh, it's an egg layer. So I don't think I've done egg. No, I haven't, I haven't done egg layers in a bucket. We're going to spawn some egg layers in a bucket. As soon as the temps uh, get up, and it's, it's like the daytime temps are there, but these 34 degree nights, it gets a little cool in there um, 
for spawning and uh, for fry because I'm going to, if I start a video series, it's going to be difficult to break down and move everything to accommodate a heater and continue the video series. So I'd rather wait till the ambient temperature was cool and, or warm enough to leave everything for the series, the spawning, the eggs hatching, the fry rearing. Okay, that's just me. That's just the way I want to do it. So we'll see what's going on. And uh, the same with the live bears. The second group is live bears. And I just want it to warm up a little bit before we get started on that. And also the, the chronology, the egg, I want to do the egg layers first. I got to get the egg layers going and then we'll move to the live bears because I'm excited about the egg layers having never done them in a bucket. Yeah. Anthony's fish room says I've thrown heaters and buckets temporarily. I, here's the thing. And I said this on Aquamate's live stream. Uh, thank you Aquamate for having me in your live stream. It was as if I was in Australia and I've never been there. Um, I don't want the risk of it suggesting that anyone use a heater in a bucket. Again, I'm not saying if, um, that it's wrong I don't know. I'm just saying I'm not going to take the risk of suggesting anyone else do it. So for safety's sake, I'm not going to use a heater in a bucket. I'm on the record as having said that. Kaler's Aquatics has, he has watched so earnestly and intently. He has ran his battery down on his phone. He's got to go get a charge. Way to go. I appreciate you, Kaler's Aquatics. You're working hard over there. The Zen Ginger says she puts heaters in buckets, but only for making brackish water and bringing it to temp. Mm -hmm. um, what I have seen done is uh, uh, small buckets placed in aquariums, with a heater in the aquarium giving the bucket a bath to heat it up, and that way that water stays to temp so as you exchange buckets you don't you don't start all over again and it heats faster a bucket bath you heard it here folks you, you don't get this on other live streams a bucket bath it could be helpful in your fish tubbing to give <laughs> to give your bucket a bath before you put your fish in a tub <laughs> too far i don't know crazy times it's 12 27 41 people in here hanging out some of the greatest people in the world are right here 34 likes beautiful people you're just beautiful lefty 3213a says what about putting the bucket on a heat pad we use these for starting seeds um okay if i'm being transparent i will not recommend that either however i do have a heat pad uh, I did buy a heat pad that was a size smaller than the bottom of a five gallon bucket. I may or may not have notched out the rim on the bottom of a five gallon bucket. So the cord would not be pinched. I may have a couple of small, uh, non-combustible rods to set a bucket on with the heat pad under it. So the cord is not pinched and the pad is not compressed. Um, the heat pad that I bought, and this is not a recommendation, people. Don't back me into the recommendation corner. Uh, the, I searched and searched until I found a pad that's high setting. The high setting on the heat pad was not too hot. It would, If the water reached that temperature, it wouldn't be too hot for the fish. Be very careful using a heat pad. That temperature setting makes the water too hot for the fish. You can cook your fish. So there's there's a caution, but not a recommendation. We good? That was good, Lefty. Lefty 3213A, it's good. I've done the same thing. I, I have a heat pad. I have a, a modified bucket in case I want to use that. And there is definitely reason for concern because some of these heat pads get too hot. But I'm not recommending you do that. The, the recommendation I would say, if you need to do this, 
um, is to get a larger aquarium than the bucket. Put some water, enough water in the aquarium to operate a heater safely, then add the bucket into the aquarium. So the only contact the bucket has is with the water and the bottom of the aquarium. The heater's off to the side in the aquarium. None of this is a problem until it's a problem. And then it's a problem. So I'm mitigating the problem on the front end by not engaging in the risk. Now, slow that down in the replay. That's, that's life wisdom. That's guiding everyone, and myself included, to better life decisions. Let's check it out in the replay. All right, Lumpy Dog says he cannot confirm or deny. See, I get that, Lumpy Dog, and I think you get me. That's exactly where we are. <laughs> don't don't even look in the video don't look in the video catalog you're not gonna find anything in there nope sterilize hello flynn's fish forum welcome good to see you haven't heard from you in a long time glad to know you're still doing good buddy thanks for dropping in zen ginger says the disclaimer any use of heater should be used with caution only in conjunction with <laughs> compulsive temp checking <laughs> these are crazy times they certainly are Okay, we're having a good time. All 40 of us still here. And it's 1230. We got to wrap this one up. Guys, listen, we got to wrap it up. We got to wrap up our fish tub conversation, our aquarium conversation. Thank you guys so much. I love talking about this stuff. Thanks for letting me mention that memberships are live on the River Life YouTube channel. If you want to support the channel, love to have you. It helps things out. We're going to go over to the River Life Art facebook page we're going to have an art chat if a, if an auction breaks out if there's something you want we'll we'll put it on the block we'll auction off a few pieces but i have been painting uh i do have some some stuff i can just run across the screen let you see kayler kayler's aquatics i hope you can make it i've got a series over there i'm looking at i believe it's titled brilliant rasbora i'd love to show you that anyway anybody that wants to drop in you're welcome you're all invited bring your friends we're going to do a little art chat over on River Life Art Facebook page. We're going to have lots of tropical fish inspired paintings. We're going to have some other, I think I see some small thumbnails of marbled salamanders, green and nulls, or ruby throated hummingbirds. But we got some tropical fish in the mix too. I hope to see you over there. I'm going to shut this one down. I love you guys. Have a great day. It's really cool hanging out with you here for a little while on your Friday morning. We'll do it again Monday morning. We'll have this Community Tank live stream on Monday morning, 1130 Eastern. Until then, why don't you get out there and see it, love it, and live it. As we close, we got the Zen Ginger coming in with a membership. Welcome to Sustainer. That is awesome, and that is a wonderful way to end the show. I'll see you on the Facebook page in just a minute or two.